fight, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid his precious body in the tomb? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. I cry and I tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? But were you there when he rose from the grave? Were you there when my children It makes me want to shout And I cry And I begin to tremble I tremble Were you there When he rose from From the grave. Jesus Christ is risen. Please rise as we sing together, Jesus Christ is risen today.
blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Amen. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In this, is, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing together our scripture hymn, Christ Alone, which you can find on the back of your bulletin.
For our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich foods filled with marrow, of aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth. And the Lord has spoken that it will be on that day. Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading the psalm responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, I would invite the children of the congregation to come forward for children's message. And parents, if you have a young child that would like to come up but would like you to come with, you're a child of God, come on up. sort of. Happy Easter. It's a great day, isn't it? A day to celebrate, a day of spring, a day of rejoicing. Did you know that in some places it is not legal to be a Christian? It is not legal to go to church. It is not legal to believe in God. I know it's hard to believe that even today Those places still exist. And there are a lot more of them used to exist a long time ago. So as Christians, we found ways to take ordinary things and use them to talk about our faith, to talk about God. And that way, if somebody, if a a law enforcement officer came to the house and you had those things laying out, they would think you were just playing. They wouldn't know that you were teaching your children about God. I have one of those ordinary things here today. What are those things? What do you think? Jelly beans? Anybody like jelly beans? 
Yeah? I personally like the orange ones. How about you guys? Huh? None? You're not a jelly bean fan? What color do you guys like down there? She likes pink. She likes pink? Okay. Any, any others, favorites? Orange is yours? Well, I'm sorry I get all the orange ones out of this bowl. I'm not sharing today. Purple for you? Black. You can have all the black ones. Well, jelly beans, the colors of the jelly beans can be used to talk about our faith, to tell a story about God. And I have this cool little cross here that has one version of jelly beans. It says, a handful of jelly beans, simple, colorful, and sweet, reminds us of the reason God makes our life so complete. Who can read up here? Would you be reading, read, willing to nice and loud read about what red is right at the top? Red is, red is for the blessed day. Green is for the blessed day. Okay, you want to pass it behind you? Nice and loud. Just pick either side. Yellow is for the sun so bright. Orange is for the edge of the night. All right, who else can read up here? Can I pass it down? Pick another side. We need one more reader. On the bottom? Or a side? Did we read them all? That's a pretty cool deal, don't you think? To be able to use ordinary jelly beans to talk about God and all of the different things that God does. Pretty cool, huh? Well, we have a member of our congregation who thought it would be pretty cool for you guys to have this jelly bean cross as well. So they purchased your very own cross kit, complete with everything you need to make one of these, and you don't even need any glue. It's all sticky stuff. And the jelly beans. But here's the deal. You have to keep it closed in the bag till you get home. Because otherwise you'll lose some pieces. Deal? Huh? The jelly beans are in the bag right there. You get to make it at your house. You can't take out the jelly beans yet because you'll ruin your breakfast. I know. Pastor Deb is so mean. Now, tell me some of you didn't already have candy this morning. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. It's okay. I'm, I might have had a Reese's peanut butter egg myself. How about if we pray? Dear God, we thank you for the ordinary things in our lives that we can use to teach about you to teach about who you are and to teach about what, what you do. And we're thankful for the adults of this congregation who want to do what they can to pass on the faith to our children. So God, bless these jelly bean crosses and bless these children that they may proclaim your good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I tell you what, while we are singing holla, 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 you can all grab one package and head back to your seats. Yes.
So just to keep you guessing this morning, because I didn't really want to have a service where Pastor Deb didn't change something, our gospel today is going to be from the book of Mark, chapter 16, instead of from John, as printed in your bulletin. The gospel reading from John 16, beginning with the first verse. We are such good Lutherans. (laughs) When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And the very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went out to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you shall see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That's what you wanted to hear this morning, right? That's why you came to church. For those reasons in particular, to hear the joyful news that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In case you're visiting and they forgot to tell you, you don't get to sleep during the sermon because I might ask you to do something. We know it's true. We heard it in our scripture just now. The three women, Mary, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome went and they brought spices because they had to hurry to place Jesus in the tomb on Good Friday for Passover was soon to happen. So they were going back to do what you would traditionally do to a body. You anoint it with a variety of spices to help the embalming process naturally, as well as to help the smell, to show their love one more time to their risen, to their Savior, crucified, crucified Messiah, crucified teacher, crucified friend. And they're worried about the barrier that would keep them from seeing Jesus. That great big stone. But when they got there, they realized that that was not the barrier at all that they should be worried about. For the stone had been moved somehow miraculously and inside the tomb, instead of finding their dead and bloodied friend, they found a man dressed in white, and Jesus was gone. Now, a whole lot of things could have happened to Jesus, but this man dressed in white told them the truth. It wasn't the stone that became their barrier for seeing their Lord. It was the fact that he wasn't there. And this man in white spoke to them, and and he said, you know, it's okay, you don't need to be afraid. 
you're looking for Jesus, right? This guy who was crucified. Well, you know, he's not here. Just a little tidbit for you. He has been raised, and he's already out working. So, go ahead, go back, tell the disciples, including Peter, what you've seen, that Jesus is not here, and that, in fact, he's already ahead of you doing, you know, Jesus' stuff. And he'll meet you back in Galilee at your home, at the home of Jesus. For in Galilee was where he had done so much of his work, so many of his miracles, where he had spent so much time with his disciples. Galilee was home. Now, one might think that they would run back and tell the disciples. That's what we hear in other Gospels, in John, in Matthew, in Luke. They, they run back. Somehow the disciples found, find out there's excitement, there's weeping. Every Gospel tells it a little bit differently. But not this one. Instead, in Mark's Gospel, through the lens of Mark's eyes and what he was trying to teach us, we hear these words. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now before we get too comfortable in our seats, Before we sit back and say, hmm, that's nice, those darn women, why couldn't they just have a little faith? Why couldn't they just trust that the, that the person in white knew what he was talking about? Why couldn't they just remember that three times Jesus had foretold of his death and his resurrection? Why couldn't they just believe and go home and tell people? Let's think about what you're going to do today. Are we going to run out these doors and yell and scream, He is risen, let me tell you about the risen Christ? Well, we're good Lutherans. We're not going to do that. That's kind of scary. People might look at us funny. We're just going to sit right here in our nice comfy pews. We're going to sing the great songs of Easter. We're going to commune together. We're going to hear the story. And then we're going to go home or downstairs, sit around the table and have a little something to eat. We might discuss the service, how great the musicians were, how wonderful it was to see friends and family in church. Might even talk about that crazy Pastor Deb just a little bit. Wasn't that a nice sermon she had? <laughs> but we sure, in heaven's name, are not going to run out in the streets and proclaim that he is risen. That is just too scary. You see, we rather like our nice, comfortable Easter sermon. We rather like just thinking in abstract, having somebody else tell us how we should feel about this risen Christ. We rather like not really having to think about it. You see, in Mark's gospel... The story is to be continued. He doesn't give us the story all tied up in a nice, neat bowl where the, where the women run back and tell about Christ. Instead, he leaves it as a cliffhanger, leaving us a little uncomfortable because we kind of like things all nice and neat. And when we hear that the women didn't tell anybody, we begin to wonder, well, how was the news spread? What happens next? 
do I have to wait until next Easter when somebody reads the other version of the gospel to have this be nice and comfortable, to be able to go home all happy and snug? What about if instead of the story being completed, we realize that the Easter story is not done? What does it mean for you that the Easter story is a story that is still being written? And in fact, we are a part of that story, of that to be continued. I think before you can answer that question, you first have to ask yourself, what's your resurrect what is your reaction to the resurrection? How do you feel when you hear the words, He is risen? Are you terrified and afraid? Are you filled with joy? Both of those ends of the spectrum are found in the Bible. What do you think about the fact? that Jesus is risen. He is no longer in the tomb. How do those words become words of life, not from the cross, but from the grave for you on this Easter morning? What does the resurrection mean for you? Have you ever stopped to put it into words? Or are you comfortable with whatever somebody tells you to think or tells you to feel? What does the resurrection mean for you when you are standing at the casket of a loved one? What does the resurrection mean for you when you are walking through a storm in your life what does the resurrection mean for you when you come to worship on a Sunday morning gathered with your family of faith? What does the resurrection mean for you when you come and you see visually and experience darkness to light and life? What does it mean for you that this man who was crucified is not here. He has been raised. What does it mean for you that the Easter story is a story that is still being written and that you are part of it? You see, we might find Jesus here, but really, Jesus tells us not to stay in our comfy zones not to get too comfortable in the pews. Jesus tells us, like he tells the women, to go. Go. Because Jesus has gone before you doing all kinds of Jesus stuff. And Jesus will meet you, yes, maybe here in the bread and the wine, in the word and the song, but more importantly, Jesus will meet you in your everyday lives, at your home and in your work. He will meet you where you are surrounded by community of family and friends and even enemies. You see, that is where the story continues. It begins at the tomb, but it continues with each and every one of you as you encounter and become and share the story of the risen Christ with others. The story continues with you. Amen. Please rise as we sing together, Now the Green Blade Rises. It's also found in the red hymnal.
Learning together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, on this Easter morning, we do give you thanks and praise that we can call out, He is risen. God, help us to think about what that means for us in our everyday lives as we continue the story. Lord, in your mercy. There are so many people, God, who have to celebrate this Easter quietly who cannot go out in the streets and proclaim he is risen for fear of their lives. God, be with them. Be with those who live in terror and fear for whatever reason. Be with our leaders that they might help bring peace and justice to the world. Be with all those who work in professions of helping and healing, of safety, Be with the members of our military and their families, God, and all who maybe are somehow separated from their loved ones this holiday. Grant them your presence, God. Bless them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy. God, be with those who are sick, those who are healing, those who will have surgery coming up, those who suffer from mental illness, those who just need a little tender extra care. Help us to be your hands and your feet, God, that they, we might bring, bring about healing, bring about peace, bring about comfort, help them to know that they are not alone. Lord, in your mercy. As we proclaim your resurrection, Lord Jesus, be with those who are mourning the death of a loved one, that for them the resurrection means life and it means hope and it means comfort. Lord, in your mercy. Be with this congregation, Lord, as we continue to walk forward in faith. Guide our ways and be with the pastor to whom they will call. We pray these things in all the unspoken prayers of our heart. God, we lift up to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord, amen. You may be seated as we gather together our offering, and we thank you for your generosity that helps the story to continue. Thank you. 
Please rise as we sing together, This is the Day. This is the day, this is the day. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This meal has truly been prepared by Jesus Christ and all are welcome to come and receive bread and wine or grape juice and feel our risen Lord's presence among us today. Ushers and communion servers, please come forward.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you can see in your bulletin, there are multiple announcements. Please take time to read them. Participate in the ministry of Bethlehem. Or Bethlehem. Sorry, I knew I was going to do that at some point in time. Participate in the ministry of our Savior's Lutheran, however you are able. It is a joy to worship with family today on this Easter Sunday. You're all invited to stay for um, potluck, brunch, breakfast, whatever you want to call it afterwards. If you didn't bring something, my guess is there's plenty of food. Have a joyous, joyous Easter. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we sing together. Now all the vault of heavens resounds.
A special thank you on this Easter Sunday to all who have helped to make this worship possible. And now I was reminded that everybody has to eat somewhere. So before we leave, let's share in the common table prayer together. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news.